Today we're going to build a Colonial Viper Mark II from Battlestar Galactica. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. I noticed right away that these are dirty. Definitely needed a bath and some warm soapy water to get some of that release agent and some of the other stuff off. And then the second thing I noticed was the parts really don't fit very well. So if you're going to build one of these kits, definitely dry fit it all together before you glue anything up. Just like on the last episode, I'm still using that gray primer and I'm using it on a model that's kind of light color. So it's a little bit hard to see in the video. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and mix up some light gray and rust and get some color on there. And I'm using some of that airbrush flow improver as well, just to make sure that it doesn't clog up in the brush. I always like to lay down the color slowly at first, get a little bit of a build up, and then go a little heavier. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put some gloss varnish on here. We're gonna be putting on some decals and adding some other paints and washes and it's gonna go on a lot better with a gloss surface. I'm going to mix up some smoke and flat brown Vallejo model color just to put a little color on those seeds. And a little bit later we're going to add some washes to this so that'll definitely dull the color down a little bit so it won't be quite as saturated. Now I'm just adding some accents to some of the details in the cockpit just to give it a little bit of variation. I'm not looking at anything in particular to do this, just kind of making it up as I go. Now it's time to hit some of those buttons with some bright red and add a little bit of blue here as well in a moment. and just accenting some more panel lines. And it's still glossy, so it doesn't look quite as good as it will later when we hit it with a mat. Time for some panel line accent color. And this just, you just kind of glob it on. It goes into all the recesses. Put it on really thick, you don't have to be careful. It just kind of flows where it wants to flow. Then you take a cloth and just kind of dab off what you don't want. You just work back and forth until you get the effect you're after. Now I mixed up just some silver paint. I'm just kind of dry brushing and adding some details just in the areas that would get a little bit of wear and tear. Just trying to make sure that it makes sense where it's being placed. While we have that nice gloss surface, it's time to add some decals. 
These are just standard water slide decals and they're pretty easy to cut out. All you have to do is drop it in water and it'll release after, oh, 20, 30 seconds or so. I like to use a toothpick to help place the decals, but you can use anything you want, really. Just be careful not to rip them. They are pretty delicate. And you can see here why they call them water slide. You basically just put them on and pull the paper out from under them. Here's how the cockpit looks with all the decals applied. So next up is to apply some Microsol. All you do is just brush this on and it makes the decals a little bit softer and they, it goes into those recesses a little bit easier. It just causes them just to dissolve a little bit. Now it's time to add some matte back on there. To make these panels a little bit glossy again, I like to use epoxy. I'm using just standard 30 minute epoxy here. Just very, very carefully I'm putting those in some of those displays, making them look nice and glossy, and also some of the instrument panels, and to just give them a little bit of a 3D effect. Here's just a quick test fit to see how it fits inside the fuselage. And it fits fine, but the fuselage itself doesn't fit very well. It's gonna require a lot of filling later. I'm testing out some frog tape here, which is really meant for house painting. Um, you'll see here in a little bit that it probably was not the best choice for this. It's fine for covering up details as long as you don't leave it on your surface very long because the adhesive will stay on the surface and when you remove the tape, it will stay. With just a little bit of work, the canopy is now complete and ready to be painted. Some more test fitting here. These pieces really are kind of strange how they go together. It's not really engineered very well and things don't fit very accurately. So there's gonna be a lot of sanding ahead and a lot of filling. And you can see a major gap where that canopy fits in the front. I'm going to use some more of that smoke color and a little bit of gray and just fill in around the canopy. I'm going to go ahead and glue that in so I need to go ahead and paint what's around there and what will be seen from the outside. Next up is to try to trim that fuselage down and get a little bit more even surface. As I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a lot of sanding, a lot of filling, a lot of back and forth. I'm using just a regular X-Acto knife. You can always use sandpaper or pretty much whatever you want. And notice how I'm pulling the blade sideways as I'm cutting. You'll get a lot cleaner cut that way than if you just try to pull it straight down because it'll actually cut into the plastic. And if you don't, it'll tend to cause the blade to kind of skip along the surface and give you kind of a rippled effect, which is not really what you want. 
Canopy glue has a lot of uses, one of which is to glue canopies, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put quite a bit on here. I want a really nice seam. This stuff dries with kind of a rubbery quality, so you can remove it later if needed, but it's, it's actually very strong, so it's going to stay in place very well, especially using as much as I did. And it also dries clear, and it's easy to clean up if a little bit oozes out. Now it's time to start sanding. I'm just using some standard 400 grit to start out with. This is my first time actually using Vallejo plastic putty. So I'm kind of testing a little bit and see how it does. It turned out to be really nice to be in that, that same kind of squeezable bottle that, that the other Vallejo paints are in. So it's easy to apply and I found my finger works really well just to, to spread it out. As it dries, it does shrink like any other putty I've ever used. So you will have to put it down, sand it, put some more down, keep sanding. A little bit of a process to get what you want, but ultimately it's pretty easy to use. I am going to be doing some weathering on this, so I'm not too terribly concerned with getting it perfect. I am trying to get it as smooth as I can, but um, there, some of the weathering will cover up and I'll end up adding a little dings and scratches anyway. So whatever's not totally smooth, I'll just make it work. And you can already tell we're starting to make a dent in it. Now let's go ahead and put the wings in there. You can see a lot of putty in the bottom there. That's just where I close some gaps where I put the landing gear panels on. You could see right through those and um, I just added a lot of putty there to cover them up and make those look like they are just one piece. It looks pretty terrible from this side, but the other side looks good. And here you can tell this model really doesn't fit that great. It's a little bit of a struggle. I'm just gonna kind of work with it as much as I can. Um, that's, I believe, supposed to be flush, but I'm just gonna make it look like a fake panel line. This is my second Mobius model, and the other one kind of didn't really fit together that great either. The detail was fine in both models, but you really do have to put a little extra effort to make these look good. In some of these areas that don't fit so well, I'm just using some Zappa Gap and then you'll see a little spray of Zip Kicker here to kick it off. And that's a whole lot easier than using regular glue and having to hold it for 10 or 15 minutes. This is me fumbling around trying to get this other part on and it really doesn't fit very well. I'm not real impressed with the engineering on how this kit goes together. But you can solve anything with a little bit of sanding and a lot of putty. Here I'm using a little bit more Zappa Gap and some Zip Kicker to kick that off. Here we have the final model all put together and ready for some gray primer. And it actually looks pretty good after all that sanding and filling. So we're ready to put some actual color on it. I ended up mixing up about two parts white to one part light gray. And of course I added some of that airbrush flow improver as well.
I like to go really slowly with this color. I'm probably going slower than I need to, but it works for me. Time to get out some Tamiya masking tape, and it looks like it's about time to reorder. I'm just masking off the areas that are going to be coated with red. And I ran out of tape, so I'm having to improvise here. Here's more of that frog tape that I'm using to mask off some of the larger areas. Don't leave it on there or it will peel off and leave the adhesive behind, which is not exactly what you want. So it's time to lay down some red. And I didn't want super bright red, so I just muted it down a little bit with some of that light gray. Looks like the lines came out pretty nice and clean. Looking at some reference material, the uh, cockpit frame looks like it's got kind of a metallic look, so I'm mixing up some silver and black here to get kind of a dark gray metallic. And using that same color, I'm hitting some of the some of the detail areas of some of the inner engine parts. Actually, I don't know what the parts are. And I'm just adding some little dots and details here and there, just mainly to the leading edges and, and some other places just to break it up and make it appear that it has been in action a little bit. And I kind of think a lot of people go way overboard on the weathering. It's all about personal taste, but I tend to like it a little bit more subtle. So that's what I'm going for on this. Next up, I hit it with a few coats of gloss to get ready for some further weathering and some decals. And this process is exactly like before. And be sure to use only Dasani water because nothing else is gonna work. And I'm just joking, of course. I'm having a little trouble with this one for some reason. The others just slide right on and once they're in place, I like to use the toothpick to just kind of smooth it out, pull that water that's under them away and they'll stick in place.
After all the decals are applied, you're going to want to hit it again with some gloss, maybe a couple coats to really seal those things in. And we're back to the panel line accent color. This is kind of where the fun part is. You just glob this stuff on and watch it work. And it just kind of does its thing naturally. And anything you don't like, you can wipe off. I'm going to purposely leave a lot of it on. Here's those kind of parts that didn't fit so well. I'm going to kind of make them into fake panel lines. And this, this is just a back and forth process as well. You can see with that gloss surface, you can wipe away as much as you need to or, or leave whatever you like. And I'm just slowly building this up, adding more and more little subtle details here and there. Wiping away some, adding some back until I get exactly what I want. And you can really see on the back here how those details just come out with this panel wash. Now it's time to get rid of that glossy finish. I'm just using that same Vallejo matte. Finally time to take off that tape. I'm just using an X-Acto to kind of remark the lines and um, hopefully redefine any kind of paint line that might be there if I just were to yank it off. And I about had a heart attack here when I saw that that glue stuck to the windows, but. I found that using just a, a little tool, which is actually a sculpting tool, it peeled right off without too much effort. And um, I was a little bit relieved. It actually ended up looking fine in the end, just needed a little bit extra cleanup. Using mostly silver and a little bit of brown, I'm gonna go and touch up some of these battle damaged areas and where the paint has flicked off and I'll come back later with some black. And a little bit of dry brushing is gonna help bring a little metallic to some of those inner areas as well. Here I'm coming back with some black paint and adding some depth to some of those areas that have some, some major gashes. This is a little hard to see from this angle, but there's some red tips on, the, on those wings. So here we have it. In the end, it turned out to be a pretty good model. It just needed a little extra work to do some filling and some sanding, but I think it turned out pretty good. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure and subscribe and like it if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.